Hi, I'm Lou Hockman, the editor of Montclair Local Nonprofit News. I wanted to thank you for joining us tonight for our forum on one of the most important decisions Montclair voters will make in this year's election. Whether Montclair should continue to have a Type 1 school district with a mayor-appointed school board or a Type 2 district with an elected board of education. Our guests tonight are Sergio Gonzalez, a former Montclair Board of Education member appointed by then Mayor Robert Jackson in 2019. Gonzalez will represent Vote Montclair, which successfully petitioned to put the referendum question before voters. Diana Anglin is chair of the Montclair NAACP's Education Committee. The committee has voted to support the change to an elected board, although the overall chapter has not taken a position. Anglin will represent the committee stance. Peter Braley is a longtime resident of Montclair with two children who've gone through or remain in the school system. Braley will represent the League of Women Voters of the Montclair area, which is endorsed continuing as a Type 1 appointed district. And Johanna Wright is an education management professional, elected member of the South Orange Maplewood Board of Education, and a member of the Essex County College Board of Trustees, which is appointed by the county commissioners. She will additionally represent the LWV. The panel will be moderated by Dale Russikoff, who was a reporter for the Washington Post for 28 years and is author of The Prize, a hard look at the aftermath of Mark Zuckerberg's $100 million pledge to transform Newark schools. Dale is also a member of the Montclair Local Advisory Board. We've tossed a coin before the event started to pick the order of speakers for opening remarks. Dale will then ask panelists questions tailored to them individually. They'll each have two and a half minutes to respond. Other participants will have up to one minute each to address those comments, if they so choose. Because we are sensitive about time, we will mute panelists if they pass the time limits and move on. You can suggest questions in the Facebook live chat or by emailing news at montclairlocal.news. We can't guarantee how many suggested questions may be used, but we are keeping an eye out. We're hosting this forum for the same reason we deliver news to you every day on montclairlocal.news and every week in print. We believe the community is at its best when it's well informed. But journalism is a time-consuming, costly endeavor, and our nonprofit newsroom has lost money since publishing its first issue in 2017. It's time to turn that around. We need to raise $230,000 this quarter to continue delivering news at the level you expect and deserve into 2022 and beyond. We're off to a great start, about $100,000 in as of this moment. Find out how you can help at montclairlocal.news donations. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for tuning in. And now on with our panel. Good, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Dale Russikoff. I'm a journalist in town, and I'm uh, on the advisory board of the Montclair Local, and I will be moderating the panel tonight. Um, and we, um, the, we had a coin toss, and the pro-elected board um, speakers won the coin toss, and so they're going to go first. And Sergio Gonzalez is the first speaker. He's, this is the, the question now is just, would you please make your case to all the listeners and viewers of why an elected board is your preference? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to our host, uh, Montclair Local, fellow panel members, um, our moderator. Most importantly, thank you to the community uh, for spending time to let us uh, communicate and express our points of view, which I think is really important. <clears throat> so tonight and through the election process, you have and will hear statements that are meant to drive fear, uncertainty, and make you doubt the validity of what is an opportunity to use your voice to elect three members of the Board of Education per year for a total of nine. I want you to use your voice to directly impact the direction of education in Montclair. No one does anybody a favor or any community a favor when they take away their voice or do not empower them to use their voice. Dark money and special interests are here in Montclair. The last mayoral election, the losing candidate lost by 3,000% on the backs of special interest dollars. Dark money will have appointed every seat by the spring unless we make a change today. One, special interest candidate controls our town and education system. Simply, the proposal is a check and balance to ensure our voices actually make a difference. Doesn't nine opportunities to direct education outweigh one? 
And if you're not paying attention, schools aren't getting the funding they need today. Most importantly, our kids and staff need a safe environment. We know what happened with the stairs. Uh, the ventilation needs work. A child, well, things have fallen off of walls onto children. It's not safe. We need the investment. And I've seen floating on social media a meme that states that an elected board of ed will be all white, all male, and wealthy only. So let's use an analog of South Orange Maplewood, which that's a representative town, right? So here's some stats on their elected board. They have the first openly transsexual elected board of education, elected board member in New Jersey. It's 44% African American on that board. The community of Maplewood is 35% African American and South Orange is 29%. And if we want to continue to count these numbers, Montclair's appointed board is 42% African American today. So who those that are using this argument, it is literally false. Where's my representation on the board? Where's AAPI? What about LGBTQ? I look forward to a spirited conversation and thank you. <clears throat> Diane? Wow, that was bringing it out already. I want to thank you for inviting me to the panel discussion tonight. I believe this is a very important topic because this discussion really will show our commitment to our children in Montclair. I'm a lifelong third generation Montclair resident. My husband and I are MHS graduates. Our children went through the public school system until high school and then they went to private school. Uh, I was invited here to represent the Montclair NAACP Education Committee where I am the chairperson. The Montclair NAACP Education Committee voted by majority in favor of transitioning to a type two elected school board of education. Full disclosure, um, I am in favor the same. I received an unmarked video the other day which stated that if we move to an elected school board, the makeup of the board would be rich white men and take pol and put politics into this, or they want me to take politics out of this. Uh, to the author of the video, I said politics are already in it. If you really wanna know how this works in Montclair, it's already an elected board for me. Uh, the mayor is elected and then he decides whoever he wants to put on the board. Our former mayor came to the NAACP meeting one time and we asked him, how do you choose board of education members? And quote unquote, he said, it's a feeling. Um, like Chris Rock in that movie, Head of State, I said, that ain't right. That's what I said. Um, so uh, I take this, uh, I take issue with the discussion about who many people believe will be affected by this change and why. So just so you know, there are probably more qualified, interested black folks that would be on the Board of Education if there were a fair process for that to happen. Right now we operate under a secret society where you have to be in the know or check a certain box to be asked. However, let's be clear, there are certain people in this town who know how to get that done. If someone tonight can tell me how to show interest in being considered for the Montclair Board of Education, like what that process is, I welcome that information. Moving to an elected board will allow for interested candidates to run and let the majority vote be heard. This is an opportunity for vetting candidates and those who want to stay the way we are. Um, now we want to uh, look at like this is the way it's been done for a hundred years. People say, oh, there's an achievement gap. Yes, I've been here and I've been in this school system for 55 years where there's been an appointed board. And I'm not mad at appointed board members and I'm not mad who's there. I think we've had some that have done a great job, but I think there's others that, you know, there's people in town who say, Diane, you know, I know who's gonna be next because the Board of Education used to be a stepping stone to almost join in our town council. I think it is time that we take so much power away from one person. And we talk about the board of school estimates. The mayor appoints the 
board members and then and chair your time is up. Time okay, is I'm up. sorry. Thank I'm you. Sorry. <laughs> Told you I'm new okay. at this. Yeah, okay. I go like this when you have 30 seconds left, but I don't know okay. if you saw me. I was, I was looking at myself. All right, okay, I'm, I'm no with problem. You. <laughs> okay, so now we'll go to the um, advocates of the appointed board, the existing system, and Peter Braley will go first. Yes, thank you, Lou and Dale, and to my fellow panelists for joining this forum for a lively exchange of ideas about the future of our schools. And thank you to all those participating in the broadcast. The energy and enthusiasm about this issue will serve our students and our community well. My name is Peter Braley. My pronouns are he, him, his. And you may know me simply as a town resident and leader of the Oratorio Society. But I am here today because I am a parent, a taxpayer, and a member of the League of Women Voters of the Montclair area. Like most of you who are watching, I have a great deal invested in the outcome of this election, and I thank the League for allowing me to be here in those roles. Everyone here tonight is deeply committed to the best educational outcomes for our children in Montclair. My wife and I moved here 24 years ago. We had heard of Montclair's diversity, its highly regarded school system, and liked the proximity to New York and commuting. We found the town even more fulfilling than we anticipated. Not always perfect, of course, but so much more community oriented than we expected. Once we had kids, we found that the magnet system greatly expanded their group of friends and their awareness of the whole of Montclair, having started at Rand Elementary, then Bullock, Glenfield, and the high school. We have been disappointed at times and certainly weren't always satisfied about how things have been handled regarding the superintendent searches, the facilities failures, and the achievement gap and equity issues, which our kids actually raised with us because of conversations with their friends. So we do admit that there are things that require change and things that require improvement. There are several ideas for change, but only one is on the ballot, and that is to throw away the system that has made Montclair a success story over many decades. When this issue first came up, I didn't have a preference, but like many of you thought, why not have an elected board? However, the more I learned, the more I realized that an elected board is susceptible to the same and new problems. Having an appointed board reduces the risk of losing our magnet schools, the risk of bond referendums being rejected by the voters, and the risk of special interest politics and money staining the process. It also allows us to draw candidates from the talent-rich community we live in. Throwing something away that I felt we could improve upon seemed an extreme option. The League has changed its position to include an advisory panel, and as we still have not found a successful argument that would have a support moving to an elected board, we are advocating for a vote against this proposition. Our children deserve the best of what this town can offer. Diversity, parents and citizens committed to an equitable education, and the full support of the board, administration, and town government. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Joanna? <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm so excited uh, to be here. Anything with Montclair just warms my heart, no matter what it is, um, because that's where my heart is. Uh, I'm here tonight, uh, basically, because I care about Montclair. And I'm in a position uh, to give you information that you probably would not have been afforded um, from someone like me, who literally has a vested interest in the town. I have family there. I grew up in Montclair, um, graduated from Montclair High School, uh, and, and got my start in life. Uh, everything that I am today is because of my matriculation in the Montclair public school system. Um, but I wanna preface what I'm going to say by saying these comments are my personal comments, my personal views, and I am in no way speaking for or on behalf of my school board. Um, so when you're talking about an elected board, Mr. Gonzalez happened to mention the South Orange Maplewood uh, school board, which I sit on. Uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we are not who we say we are when we're talking about diversity and when we're talking about inclusion. Uh, 
and we're talking about those things. I think it, if anybody has been looking in the newspaper of late, uh, reading things about our school district, you'll see that we're far from that utopia that you want to um, uh, explain uh, this evening. First of all, um, I have, we have what we, I would call a rogue board, a board that's dysfunctional, a board that's fractured, and a board that is uh, basically run by a, a block of people. Many people refer to it in South Orange and Maplewood as the inner circle. Uh, if you notice Monday night in a public board meeting, the same board brought a resolution to the public in the, in the thick of night. Uh, didn't feel that they had to discuss it with anybody and they passed something that wasn't good, wasn't good for the community or anybody else. But that's what you have when you have an elected board and you have a block of voters. And there's really not too much that you can do about it except try and get out. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. In South Orange and Maplewood, I am one of only three board members in the past 10 years who have gotten on the board uh, that wasn't a part of that machine that we're talking about. Uh, that's critical. And so I would say that our school board is on, you know, in terms of an elected board is on life support. Um, was that the fist? No, that was the, the that's the end. <laughs> that's the end, okay, thank you. You, want, you can finish your sentence though, please. Um, so uh, basically uh, what we have, it's a monopoly on who gets elected to the board. Um, and, and what we're seeing now my last sentence is that this is a, a, a board, an elected board using policy as a background to administer to the district. And that is not something I want okay. to see in Montclair. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanna mention before we go to the questions that um, we, all, we also wanna thank TV34 and Radio Free Montclair for sharing this discussion with your audiences. We really appreciate that. Um, okay, now I'm going to ask the appointed board supporters the first question. Um, a primary concern of supporters of an appointed board is, is that, I'm sorry, a primary concern of supporters of an appointed board is that an elected board would lead to the elimination of the magnet system, since there would be tremendous pressure to end the roughly $2 million line item for busing service that allows kids to attend schools well outside the town's substantially segregated neighborhoods. What is a guarantee that in a severe budget crunch brought on by dropping enrollment, a recession, or the urgent need to spend money on say crumbling buildings, that an appointed board might not make the same move? Um, should we start with Peter? Sure. There's, in many of the, the points that have come up, uh, and on various issues, there's no guarantee on either side that, uh, that anything is absolutely 100% safe or absolutely 100% at risk. But we have to look at the, the reality of what happens in, um, in elections, uh, elections that are, can be very emotional and can be driven by a lot of different outside influences. Uh, that don't always wind up reflecting on or giving us the best choices for our, our long-term interests. And what we feel is that with an elected board, um, there's no guarantee that, it, that they're going to immediately threaten magnet schools, but the possibility exists much more so than with an appointed board. And we're simply trying to avoid having that conversation. I know that there have been several people, proponents of the elected board that have promised and committed that they would always support the magnet system. It's an important part of why Montclair is as unique as it is as a community, but there's no guarantee there. And if we have a reduction of school age kids and, and an increase in seniors in, in the town, and there may just be that faction of people that wants to get involved and says, this is a great way to reduce our taxes. Um, a great way to put money somewhere else, and it puts it at risk. And if we lose the magnet system, if we lose that transportation, Montclair really starts to lose its unique identity. Okay, thank you. And Johanna? 
Oh, you're muted. Johanna, you're muted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you know, Montclair has faced difficult decisions in the past and, and an appointed board has never eliminated busing, which is really, really important. Uh, the other thing is that um, when you have uh, the wherewithal, the money, the email list, the knowledge, you know, and the people to run for these offices, everything changes. It, it, it changes. There's voter apathy. There are a lot of things that go on. Uh, our, our children are our most precious commodity. And, and I say to you, have, has the education gone wrong in, in, in Montclair for children? Are they not no longer going to colleges? Are they uh, no longer succeeding? You know, what is going on there? And if things are fine, why are you trying to change it? Thank you. Um, now I'd like to ask the pro-elected side a similar question, but a little bit from another angle. Um, there is tremendous concern that an elected board will be very budget driven because, sorry about that, because um, the, you know, uh, I think two thirds of the voters in Montclair do not have a child in the public schools. And they are very concerned, as everyone is, about property taxes, but maybe more so than people who are using the schools at this time. Um, they could see the end of the magnet system as a step to reduce spending and Montclair's sky high property taxes. How do you feel about possibly making that trade off? And are there guarantees you could make that it wouldn't happen? Dan, okay. Um, so this is. Uh, what I started with is fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? This is more of that. You know, we're under a court order. So unless something changed, it's not on, it's not on the table. Um, is it an expensive line item? Yes, but it's part of the value it draws people here. Do we pay lots of taxes, lots in taxes? Absolutely. But people come here and they make a choice. Look at the map. It's a blue town, right? Uh, this is, we are, we, we, it's in our blood. It's in our DNA. There's zero risk to the magnet system. So I, I'm just going to leave it there. And I'll let uh, Miss England pick up from there. Yeah, I um, when the magnet school system conversation comes up um, again, there's nothing that's going to stop the magnet school system. I was a part of the um, integration of schools, and the magnet school system came about so that we didn't just have neighborhood schools. The problem with the magnet schools at this time is really things like technology. Every school had to have technology. Every school has what the other school has and those things have been blurred. What we have to do is just focus on the, um, the uniqueness of the different schools and what they offer. I think it's unfair to say that a um, elected board would affect the magnet schools when, like I said before, you elect a mayor. If you saw our election this past time, it really had to do with money. And where did that money come from? Who backs the mayor? So the mayor will could appoint people that those big money or you know whatever you want to call them special interests. Um, could want to get rid of a magnet school. So there's no guarantee either way. I just don't think it's fair to put that argument out there that an elected board would just be um, budget driven. A lot of the people that live here that do not have kids in the school system, um, some of us being them, uh, we probably had kids in the school system when they benefited from um, busing and going to different schools and learning about different arts and being able to have a choice. And that's what's great about Montclair. I think if you have an election, you have to find out, like you don't vote for that person that doesn't have an interest in keeping Montclair the same way that it is. We don't want it exactly the same, but we want different people's talents. But the appointed, like I said, there's no vetting. And now the people who are for appointed say, well, you know, now we can change things. Let's put an advisory board together and let's do things like that. That's not the way it works. It's how the mayor wants it done. So we want more input 
into this process. We want more input into the budget and how things are done. So that's my point. Either side, there's no guarantee that there is security of our magnet system other than our community members that know what it was like and why the magnet system was designed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, Peter, you had a, you wanted to make a comment. You have, you have 60 seconds. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I just wanted to mention or, or point out that the Montclair is not under any court order. Uh, the, the busing and the magnet system was entered voluntarily at the time and it has served the community well. Uh, we are not under any court order. We entered it voluntarily, we could leave it voluntarily. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll reiterate, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I mean, it, it, it is a possibility. Um, the only other point that I'll make, I've, I've heard a couple of times about the, uh, the dark money special interests and corruption in the election for mayor. Um, if we're denigrating the election process in Montclair, I'm not sure we want to be adding to that burden by, by throwing something as valuable as our kids into the mix. Thank you. Um, okay, now I'll start this one with the elected uh, board advocates. <clears throat> The Montclair school system has had a lot of deep troubles in recent years. We haven't been able to hold on to a superintendent. Um, we have an achievement gap between white and black students that's one of the largest in the state. The schools have physically deteriorated to an alarming degree um, and they've, they remained closed for almost one and a half years during the pandemic. It's easy to look at the problems and say the appointed board isn't working. I'd like to ask both of you, um, Diane and Sergio, to explain clearly and in detail how an elected board would do a better job on these issues, the turnover of superintendents, the achievement gap, the reopening of the schools last year, and the physical deterioration of the buildings. I'll start. Um, I have a lot of experience with the Board of Education meetings, being a former president of PTA Council, <clears throat> um, working with the NAACP Education Committee, and just having conversations with our Board of Education, who's wonderful, and our superintendents. Uh, I will tell you, though, that the mayor who appoints the board hires the superintendent. So what we want is an elected board where people who may have talents. There's so many people who come to that mic every night at the Board of Education meeting. There's so many people in this town that, you know, had they known maybe that they could run or, and, and their voice goes unheard. You talk to a microphone, the talents that are here with people with financial experience, people with human resource experience, people who have special um, special education knowledge, they won't get that choice, that chance to join our board if the mayor doesn't know them and like them. So what I would like to say is that there are problems in Montclair. There's gonna be problems in any district. However, we want people who want to be there. And you know, we don't just want people who are there, like I said, in this little secret society or may have other um, you know, using this as some other type of stepping stone. And I'm not accusing our board of that. I have a great relationship with them. I just think um, to have nine people on that board is, you know, even a bigger advantage. And I think to have people from all walks of life, I know people that are at that board of education meeting that some people may find, you know, controversial or things, but they may bring a new light had they been elected to join our board. So I, this is a democracy. We can no longer be under this, um, like I, I'm gonna keep calling it a secret society. When, um, like I said, I grew up in this town. I see your fist, we're good. All right. I respect it. <laughs> you have 30 so, seconds. You can keep going if you want. Are you, were you done? No, I am done. Okay. But I just don't want to put any blame on the appointed board of what's going on in Montclair, just like I wouldn't put that burden on anyone who is elected. But I think that we've done something for so many years. It's time to change and get some new input into this process. That's it. Okay. You know, our expectations have changed over the past 10 years, right? 
Um, everyone has a microphone today and they use it. We have uh, lively chats on social media and being responsive to that is, mass is very important. And an elected board will allow a direct connection to individuals' constituents to express and fix those needs and concerns. I sat on that board, I saw so many driven, intelligent people from all walks of life. And they spend three minutes at a time to get up there and make their case. And you can't get behind the wall, can't, you don't know who's behind the curtain to get on the other side. And getting on that other side needs to be democratized. We need a more open, responsible, responsive, and accountable individuals in this town. I sat on that board. I loved everybody that I worked with on there. They were all very special people and very well-intentioned. But the reality is, is that when you are monitoring chats, we see it in our, our uh, councilman at large, Jacobellis, very responsive, right? He's using the social media platforms today, and that makes a difference. It makes a difference. We have a monopoly today. Just want a voice. Underprivileged children are not being served today. They're not. The data points are horrendous. So the status quo, keeping the way it is, is a vote for failure. It's okay, right? It's okay if we keep things the way they are. Our children are not being served to the best. And I emphatically ask you to vote yes on question three. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sergio. Um, and now um, to the appointed board advocates, um, you know, I went through that whole it's litany of really serious issues um, facing public education in Montclair um, that haven't been resolved um, and in some cases haven't even been addressed. Um, and through all this time, we've had an appointed board. How can you argue that an appointed board holds the school district accountable for serving Montclair school children? Peter? I will go first. Um, I, I think that what we've seen, and, and I've mentioned already before, uh, and studies have been done, it's very hard to find a common uh, element in either elected boards or appointed boards for success in the areas that are described and the areas that, that we've had difficulties in with superintendents and with facilities and with uh, especially with the equity and achievement gaps. Those are not issues unique to Montclair. Those are issues that are a part of every school system's problems. And there is no evidence that one or the other has a, a monopoly on, on the right solution for those. It takes the effort of the entire community along with the board and town government to make changes here. Uh, but I'd also like to say along these lines and, and relative to the answers that both Sergio and Diane uh, gave, I, frankly, I think we're actually in, a, in agreement in that um, Diane said we need change and we need to get new input into this. And we agree. Um, the, the league has proposed an advisor to make changes here that would uh, provide, it would take a look at the, this wealth of talent that we have in Montclair and, and provide candidates for the position. And then the accountability is we elect a mayor who will abide by that committee's uh, role in the process. Uh, there is accountability, there's transparency. We're not advocating for the status quo. We don't think an elected board is the solution because we don't feel, and we've got plenty of evidence here, that in spite of all the enthusiasm and all the, the wonderful people that do get involved in school board meetings and stand up and speak, that in the end, we're going to have that many candidates running for office. And there's, there's plenty of examples of that. Um, in, in communities around us. West Orange has two candidates for two positions. Livingston has three candidates, Verona three, both for two positions. Glen Ridge has three candidates for two positions. 
Um, we might think that our enthusiasm makes us so unique and different from all these other towns. But at the end of the day, our voting uh, participation is the same as these towns. And uh, eventually we're gonna find ourselves without the choices we want. Thank you, Peter. Um, Sergio has his hand up to make a one minute comment. Yeah, so I appreciate the points of view about developing a, a committee, but it's non-binding. It's not accountable. It's pie in the sky. We have a binary option. The law states that it's type one, type two. So type one with some soft thought about a committee doesn't hold any, it, it's, it's, it's non-binding. It doesn't mean anything. So um, now as for the, will Montclairians get involved? Uh, I know of many that have expressed to me an interest for running for the board. I also know uh, that I've seen so many parents who are involved in organizations who express their voice, MFEE, PTAC, the, uh, dyslexia advocates, et cetera. This town is special and we are, and we will make a change and make a difference. Thank you, Sergio. Um, Peter, I'm gonna go ahead and call on Johanna because she hasn't spoken yet. I'm sorry, I'm not calling you. Um, so Johanna. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't know, I may be wrong, but I remember um, uh, the Montclair district talking about the infrastructure when you had an interim superintendent. Um, I think it was Blondie Beyond, I, I can't remember, but he requested an, an infrastructure plan. Um, and I don't know what happened to that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start having those issues. We're going through bonding ourselves in, in, in my school district, but that seems that something sort of fell off the truck. But when we're talking about children and the achievement gap, I don't call it an achievement gap. I call it an expectations gap. We don't have expectations for our children. Uh, we don't even have expectations uh, for ourselves most of the time. But when you're looking at um, a district continuing to have issues with educating black children, you're talking about ambivalence, uh, in many instances, you're talking about malfeasance, you're talking about apathy, negligence, incompetence, and cronyism. All of those things are associated with elected boards. And I can tell you, uh, I'm talking fact uh, where I'm concerned. In 2014, the Office of Civil Rights came into our district. I remember coming here to Montclair at the Bullock School. Uh, talking to parents and teachers and administrators about what you can do to make it better. These things that, that took place because of an appointed board. Uh, Montclair uh, was not served a, a, a consent order to, to, to uh, be made to educate children. You worked it out. Um, I heard Miss um, Anglin say that she didn't have a problem with any of the board members. So I, I guess I'm just sitting here sort of bewildered uh, about uh, changing because we know that nothing changes if nothing changes. And having an advisory board, if you're, you're talking about you're concerned about who's sitting on the board, um, you're talking about a mayor who has an appointment, those appointments go away uh, every so often. But an elected board, when people come in with the things that they have and the power and the money, uh, it would get to the point where, where we are now. And, and, and again, I don't want to see Montclair go through that uh, experience. Time, time is up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And um, now that we have two hands up, Peter, is your hand still up? Oh, it is. Okay. Let, let's go with Diane first, just to go from one side to the other. Okay. So Diane, what is your, what is your response? Oh, you're muted. I, I, yeah. Um, Coach Wright, my point of saying that I get along with all of the board members is because that's who I am. I work along with people and should any of them run on an elected board, I'd probably vote for them if they are about, you know, the, what we're looking for. The, but you know, we're not Maplewood. We're not Maplewood and we're not South Orange. And I think that there's some issues and there's been contention. It's going back, you know, some years because I know, you know, my sister lives in Maplewood. But when we talk about um, achievement gaps and we talk about the board, we I don't blame the people who sit on the board. I blame the process. 
And what we want to do is change this process. I think that um, when this came up, there's a lot of people who are like, you know, I would have loved to know. And that's my question again. Um, the League of Women Voters, you know, all of these organizations that could help young people learn about the process to vote. We need to get people out to vote. We should have been educating people on type one, type two. And now that it's on the table and this thing could go away, everyone wants to come up with, you know, like, oh, we can have an advisory board. I think that's a great idea, but that's going to be on whoever our mayor is. We're okay, in thank you. You're dying. I'm sorry, your time is no, up. No, no, that's okay. I'm good. Okay. Okay, thank you. You are agreeable. <laughs> okay, um, Peter. Yeah, so with regard to the, the binding and not binding, uh, legally binding, it doesn't have to be legally binding. It's politically binding. It's morally binding. Uh, we, we have debates and people run on platforms. They run based on what they say they're going to do. And if a, you elect a school board member and they do, don't do what they say they're going to do, they don't get reelected. They shouldn't get reelected. The same thing with a mayor. We shouldn't elect the mayor unless they commit to the advisory board process. It's simple as that. And if they renege on that, they don't get reelected. It's, it's the, the legally binding stuff doesn't matter. We're a community of neighbors and friends dedicated to the purpose of educating our kids. And we've got to stick to that. Thank you. Now I see we have three more hands up. Um, I, I really feel like we need to get to the next question, but okay. Um, can, can I just give you quick, like, you know, um, yes. uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, please. Thank you. So let me drop my hand real quick. So, uh, people run to run on platforms. Uh, we've seen it in many elections, uh, the platform and the reality often don't align. So I'm just looking for a fighting chance. Three, three seats per year. And I would encourage everybody to Google Montclair 150, how Montclair schools came to be. It is a great educational piece written by the Montclair local. And in there, you will find out the story of Harris Davis, who was an advocate for her child. And a group of parents filed a lawsuit against the Board of Education. And it was a landmark case that led to Montclair being put under a desegregation order. Thank you. Okay, um, and now, um, Joanna, did you have your hand up? I did, but I was almost going to say the same thing that Peter said, so I'm good. Okay, great. <laughs> and Diane, did you no, have your hand up? I'm good, too. We can move on. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so now, um, let's see. Um, okay, let's start with the appointed board advocates. An appointed board is supposed to be more disposed to making capital, major capital investments in a town's schools since members don't have to face the voters who, every year who might be upset about big spending or taxes. Given that we have an appointed board, why has the physical plant of our schools and the capital spending to improve it been so neglected for so long? Peter or, or Johanna, whoever wants to start. I'll, I'll go. Um, I, I think it's, it's been stated, and there's no secret, that, that Montclair school boards have gone through a, a difficult time with regard to superintendents. Um, and the budgets are presented, uh, both the operating budget and the capital expense budget are presented by the superintendent to uh, the Board of School Estimate. And with all of the turnover that we've had um, and turmoil, uh, it's, there hasn't been a lot of consistency there have been challenges. Um, and those are things that clearly, as I said in the beginning, that we need to fix. But fixing it doesn't mean throwing it away. And, and that's something that we really strongly want to reiterate. We are fortunate now that we, we have found a permanent superintendent after several interim positions. And the, uh, we're very hopeful that, that Dr. Pons will stay and achieve all the things that, that he would like to achieve. We have a capital improvement, uh, a capital expense budget currently uh, before the, uh, the Board of School Estimate. And uh, we're hoping to get that ratified um, so that we can start put shovels on the ground as it were, uh, or ventilator, <laughs> ventilation system back in the schools. But the, um, there's no, uh, 
realistic suggestion that an elected board would have managed this any differently. Um, and, and that's something that we have to be honest about as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Joanna, did you wanna take that, take that on also? You know, the bottom line is, I think all schools across America have an issue. We, we have a lot of buildings that are very, very old. Uh, many oftentimes things are neglected. Um, we can't make up our mind. We go from one thing, one thing to the next. I can't really speak about Montclair. All I know is I remember um, uh, the superintendent talking about the infrastructure because we were doing the same thing uh, in South Orange and Montclair and South Orange sort of piggyback on one another. You know, we like things that you do, you like things that we do. Um, but then COVID came along and caught us all off guard. Um, and that uh, ensued with um, uh, children coming to school and, 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 and wanting them to come, not come to, to come to school in, a, in an unsafe environment because of the infrastructure. So maybe this is something that you can really look at with the fine uh, tooth comb and do some things about it at this point. It is an emergent situation across the country. Thank you. Um, and now a, um, a multitude of superintendents coming in and out, there's been no consistency. Thank you. Okay, now I have a similar question again from a different angle for the elected advocates. Um, with the property taxes for school funding, to pay for the school funding at a record high, an elected board would be under severe pressure to cut spending given that three members would face re-election every year and only 30% of Montclair voters have a child in the public schools. Moreover, statewide in districts with elected boards, bond issues have to go before the voters and one in three of the bond issues is voted down. If you were running for the board or elected to the board, would you advocate for big ticket capital spending to bring our schools up to code? A report to the district said the situation is so severe it will require $150 million in capital spending over a period of years. Um, so, my, my answer is yes. Um, I do not have a, a child in the school district right now. We pay huge taxes and um, I want the best for all young people in Montclair. I want them to be safe. And being a graduate of Montclair High School and going through all those schools, I want to make sure that those buildings are there for my 100th reunion. I just, you know, I know my grandmother went to Montclair High School and they're old buildings, but we want people to make that a priority. And we want our township council to make it a priority. I don't know why this bond issue isn't resolved yet. There are schools like Madison, they have all new ventilation. Um, they got it done. Like Montclair needs to put our children as a priority and school is the biggest thing on the table again. Our Board of Education put it to our Board of School Estimates and it is sitting there collecting cobwebs. So your appointed board, our appointed board, let me not say yours, because I'm all about it. Our appointed board, we were in there. They heard the people, they made the suggestion. And you know why it's sitting there? It's because it's all about politics. And the thing is, that we want people to be able to say something. Don't discount people in this town who pay taxes. They know what their taxes are. They want the best for our students. They don't wanna see busing go away. They just wanna make sure that spending is proper. Yes, when um, Johanna talks about Mr. Bolandi, when he was here, he was seeing that when Montclair had all this money, I'm sorry, they just came up with so much spending, 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 spending. When we didn't have that money anymore, then it was time to cut back. And now we wanna fire teachers and get rid of paraprofessionals. It was mismanaged. So like I said, let's get some folks in there with talents. And if you're on an appointed board and you love it and you wanna come back, run for a school board and we'll vote for you. Thank you. Sergio? Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Brilli, you, you made a comment about the basically it's kind of turned into a revolving door of superintendents. I promise you, Montclair, you vote no, and we don't get to influence who's on that board. Dr. Pons is out, 
and not because he wants to, because the powers that be don't like him. I mean, would you like him if he had the gall to to sue the union to get the kids back in and the union boss is running the show? Careful, folks. He's a it's a big risk. So you get two more seats in January. Then we get three in May and we can diminish this influence. Unless, of course, you want another set of superintendents. But let's talk about the Board of School Estimates, right? What's it made up of? It's made up of the town council. And most times the mayor's on it, but not ours because the judge told them it was a no-no. But they're focused on the AAA bond rating. So our money that in our heavily uninvested deteriorating buildings are getting more expensive to fix. The more time we take to fix it, the worse it's going to get. Plain and simple. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, now I have one question for everyone. Um, the mayor of Montclair, as you all mentioned, is the president of the State Teachers Union and also has the authority to, to, point, to appoint all members of the current school board. For the pro-elected advocates, how much of a factor is the mayor's day job in your opposition to the current system of appointing board members? And what is to stop the NJEA from running well-funded candidates for all school board slots? Uh, Diane, you want to start or Sergio? Okay, so it's okay. So let's talk about um, the the challenges that we've had as a community of getting moving this forward from a type one to type two. I think it was I, you got don't quote me, but I believe it was four or five times. It's already since the '60s. It's 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 we've gone through this. I believe it was six times before women got the right to vote before that vote passed. So let's just put that out there, that the argument that we've tried before and it never really worked is another false argument. But um, so schools are the draw, right? Um, and last time it was 57-43. Can we make sure and ensure that uh, certain groups don't run a slate? No, but that's democracy. That's what we want, a spirited debate with nine people of various points of view to help drive policy. So good, run. Lots of people are gonna run and we're all gonna make arguments and we're all gonna lead to the same thing, which is focused on interests. And hopefully the vision is that those interests drive educational outcomes for our children. But right now it has not worked for many, many years. We've had a revolving door of superintendents. And unfortunately, the cachet of Montclair for a high quality superintendent, if we push another guy out, guys, we need to really just, we need to vote yes and push this thing forward. Thank you. But my question was, um, could you address this? How, if, if the mayor were not the president of the State Teachers Union, would this uh, campaign be going on? Yes, um, it's gone on before. No, but yeah, I mean, I mean it, it is. Yeah. Okay. I, it, it's gone on. This, is, this isn't the first time we, we've gone through this. So absolutely, it'd still be going on. It's going to be a discussion. It's about voters' rights. It's about making my voice make a difference and not empowering one person for four years to manage uh, a board. Okay. So absolutely. Thank you. And Diane? Okay, so let me make this clear, like Coach... Johanna did. This is my opinion. I met Sean Spiller when he came knocking on our doors, a young guy running for the third ward council. We met him, loved him. So I'm going to start with that. Should he be our mayor? In my opinion, no. That was a big conflict of interest when we know that he has to appoint school board members and would be sitting on the board of school estimates. That was a no-no. So how did he get in? I'm not sure, right? Let's just leave it at that. Um, his opponent, a good friend of ours and community activist, Dr. Baskerville, uh, ran an honest campaign 
She asked for votes to be recounted and Montclair as a whole ignored that. No, not the uh, League of Women Voters. Thank for them that they wanted those uh, votes counted. So we already put ourselves in a bad situation when we put a mayor that had a conflict of interest. And we knew that for the NJEA, you move to president. There was no, you know, oh, we got to vote him in. You're going from vice president to president. We knew that. So there was a problem from the beginning. So I do not think we should have a mayor with any more conflicts of interest in education, um, regardless of appointed or elected, to be honest with you, because even when it's elected, our elected officials will be working with our town council. We don't want those conflicts of interest there. I've said that before, I said it again, no bad feelings for Sean, um, but that election was ugly. Maybe it was because it was COVID and we couldn't get out and get information to people. Um, but what, uh, I hope I answered that question, but that, that's, that's the problem. But I do wanna say that that's from Diane Anglin and not from the NAACP Education Committee. Uh, we do not need those conflicts of interest. And if I have two more seconds, I do wanna bring up that even with our board members, um, we do not have a vetting system. We do not know. No one knows until they are released in the Montclair Local or Montclair Times. Um, it's appointed. So we never get to ask these kind of questions. Hopefully with... Again. Okay. Thank you so oh, much. Y'all know where I'm going. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Peter. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I have a slightly different question for you. Oh, I wanted um, that. Oh, well, this is similar, so you can answer both. Um, but I was going to ask, how does the, the current mayor's day job complicate your argument for maintaining the existing system when he is allowed to appoint the entire board? Um, in the first place, I, I both personally and um, I believe the league is in full agreement with what Diane just said. Um, I think in a perfect world, we could have for probably he's not allowed to, but it would have been nice to recuse himself from that responsibility because there's a clear conflict, and it and it and it raises the the uh, it, it's the perception, even if it's not the reality, that there's something that's not necessarily right. Uh, and I don't think we have an argument there. We also agree that there should be a vetting process. There should be a way to, to identify people before it gets to the mayor's desk. And that's why we're advocating very strongly for this committee. And I think Dr. Baskerville's name was mentioned and I don't wanna put words in her mouth, but I believe she also uh, suggested something along the same lines of an advisory panel or committee to provide candidates that have been vetted uh, to the mayor and the accountability for the mayor is that he agrees to accept that as a condition of getting elected. And for better or worse, you know, we're talking about elections and how you know, important it is. Of course, elections are hugely important. And we're, we're here discussing whether or not we should elect a school board, but we're also here discussing how problematic this particular election was. And there was no secret what Sean Spiller's day job was. Um, and he got elected mayor. So the people have spoken and, you know, we would like to see a system that's changed and we'd like to see either he, if he's running for reelection or the next mayor and certainly all the next candidates to accept the abiding uh, ruling of, a, of an advisory council on for candidates for the school board. I, I think that's absolutely critical. And I, there's, you won't find any, difference uh, of opinion here with what Diane said. Thank you. Um, Johanna, would you like to take that on also? Um, how, how does the current mayor's day job complicate your position and your argument that Montclair should keep its a, a appointed board? Well, see, it doesn't complicate me at all, but I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening. You have a, a mayor who's involved with the, the, the NJEA, and it seems to me uh, that the, the citizens of Montclair elected uh, this young man. And, and you feel now 
that maybe that was a mistake or, or maybe something should have been done. See, we're taught not to make mistakes, right? But that's counter to learning, all right? So how do you learn if you don't make mistakes? And that's why they have erasers on pencils because we do, but you don't want to do it when others are paying the price for that mistake. And I think the price that will be paid for that mistake would be to change how you are selecting your board members and going from an appointed board to an elected board because somebody got angry because somebody got into office that they really didn't want to get in and had a conflict. And now we want to throw the baby out with the bath. So I see um, adults almost acting childlike. I mean, are, are the children watching? You know, are we modeling for them in terms of what we're doing? I think that um, uh, people in Montclair communicate and collaborate very, very well. And nobody in Montclair is gonna let children get hurt because of an appointment to a board of education because people can come and, 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 and it is not easy being a board member these days. And not too many people wanna do that job. It's not, it's, it's, it's not comforting uh, for a lot of reasons. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have our hands up. Um, we've got uh, Diane. Diane, did you want to answer? Yes, or, yes. Or question? Um, yes, there's problems with elections, but when we model for young children, we want them to understand that this is a democracy. We teach our children to have a voice and be a part of um, situations and try to be a part of problems. When everyone says that we'll come up with an advisory board or you know this is what we want, well, where have you been? We've had this appointed board and this um, elected board comment or you know situation didn't just come up with Sean Spiller. This came up before and it was rejected. And I think we need to revisit it. Um, like I said, we've done this this way for so long and now people get it. If you wanna get yourself on the board, this is who you elect mayor. And then, the only other fill-ins are when you got to check a box. Oh, we need a black woman. Let's put this person here. We need a black man. Let's put it there. Somebody tall or somebody short. We can't do it like that anymore. Thank you. Um, okay, Sergio. I'm sorry, Peter. Then Sergio. Yeah, I just I, I I should have said I you know I think we need to be careful and not make the decision we're about to make uh, at the at the polls. Uh, for the future of our children and the future of our school system uh, about our current mayor uh, or the current board. This election is, is it's about the next mayor and the next board. Uh, this is about the future for our kids. And I think we need to look at that very carefully. And, and you know, I think it is important that we have the discussion. It has been had before. There's an article that I saw from 19, 19, 1988. That's before email. <laughs> from the New York Times, and, and it was about this issue. And if you read, you could publish it today and it would ring absolutely true. The arguments are, are virtually identical. Um, this discussion has been going on for a long time. Montclair is unique. We need to make the right decision for Montclair. And I think let's keep that in mind. Thanks. Okay. You know, okay. a point in time you know, someone would say, yeah, you know, we've been trying to give women the right to vote, but it's failed a couple of times. So it's not going to we shouldn't move it forward. OK, listen, this is about voters rights. Someone mentioned uh, throw, throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, I sat on I was the chair of curriculum special ed. If you knew those data points, if you saw how badly our neediest children are being failed, you would, you would sit here with as much passion as I am because we, we're failing. We're failing our neediest, most needy children. Um, you know, I appreciate the, the comment about an article from 1988. Um, and you're right, email didn't exist and neither did, neither did we have the tie-ins and the ability to communicate directly with our local representatives. And that is so important. And don't forget, this is 2021. Let's use our voice. Thank you. 
Um, I would like to, I guess we, we really only have time for one more round of questions. So um, I, I wanted to ask this and I'll start with the appointed side. Um, it's your, your, it's your position that appointed boards help keep politics out of education policy in Montclair. But the power to import, the, to, as you've all just pointed out, the power to appoint the entire board is now in the hands of one person, the mayor, and has been for as long as any of us has lived here. Um, the appointment process is opaque at best, as you've all pointed out. Uh, many in residents interested in serving on the board have no idea how to get the mayor's attention. Isn't the system already political, Peter? It, it, certainly it, it's political in, in the micro sense uh, because you're focused on getting the attention of one person. But I think that it's very different from political in the sense of I have to run an election campaign. Um, and. We are again, I'm, I want to reiterate that the league is not supporting the status quo. And we don't think that the, this should be just a decision uh, or as I think Sergio mentioned, or I'm sorry, Diane mentioned that the mayor just has a feeling about it as to how this happens. Um, you know, we're not looking to use a sorting hat to find our, our uh, board of election. Uh, we're very strongly advocating for the next mayor uh, and even for this mayor. He can jump in right now and say that, uh, you know, let's find that advisory panel. Let's get citizens from the community. Let's find those members of the community that are so interested in participating and get them uh, to where they can speak to, about their qualifications and what they can bring to the board. That's how we can change things. This involvement of the community right now is absolutely perfect. It's wonderful. It's what we should all be doing all the time, not just every six or eight or 10 years when this issue comes up. We can make the changes necessary to get transparency and to get accountability in our school board process without going to an elected board. It's up to us. And, and I don't like this notion that it's, it's all or nothing and that way didn't work and therefore we're never gonna do it again. And just very quickly, I've got uh, probably 20 seconds left. The league is, doesn't just adopt its last position because it did it six years ago or 14 years ago or 40 years ago. Every time this issue has come up, we start at it and look again, we evaluate it fresh and new and decide whether or not we stay with the position or we adopt a new position. And the, the League of Women Voters adopted a new position this year. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and um, Johanna? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm really getting educated as I'm sitting here and, and I'm more dogged and sticking my heels in for an appointed board. Um, when you look at the demographics in Montclair, when you're talking equity, and people being represented. I know that when people run for election in off seasons, you, you have a very small population of people who actually vote, very, very small. And so it's very easy for special interest groups to come in and have that one item that they're going in for, and this is what we're gonna do, and we have the money uh, to get it done. You know, I've seen it, you know, and, and, and I don't wanna press rewind on that and see that here um, uh, in Montclair, um, but to have all of the wards represented sitting on that board is far more better than what would be out in the air coming back. And we have to understand that education has changed. Uh, we look, we can go all the way back to the Common Core and all of these things that were brought in. You weathered the storm. You, you came through that testing uh, because you had an appointed board. Uh, you came through the Office of Civil Rights and things because you had an, an appointed board. We're still going through it because of that elected board and those, those block of voters that we have, which is detrimental to every child that's sitting in chairs that need to be educated equitably. Thank you. Um, and Diane, I see you have your hand up. Um, I wonder if I can go ahead and ask you and Sergio a question. And if you don't get to address it in that, you can have another shot. Okay, <laughs> great, thank you. Um, the New York Times has a major article today 
about the hijacking of local school board races by well-funded people with narrow interests. In the case that they were describing, it was an anti-mask candidate. Um, and a few years ago, hedge fund managers from across the country poured millions of dollars into candidates who supported charter schools who were running for the LA school board. Um, are you concerned that wealthy donors with niche interests could flood our elections in Montclair and create rancor that could distract us from our own issues? Oh, you're muted, sorry. So a couple of years ago, I think our mayor appointed um, people and people thought because they were skin folk, they were kin folk. And that wasn't true. Um, the, the board had more contention and arguing and this was going on and that was going on and uh, disrespect. And, you know, it almost seemed like there was a coup trying to happen. And so at one time it was like, well, am I going to appoint them? Am I going to pull them back? We, we had a big mess. Um, so what I want to say is um, when we were talking about equity, I think it is so um, it, it's time to take like uh, that conversation and put it towards, like I said, I think with an appointed board, you have people that would never even have an opportunity to run. And um, I know that Coach Wright has been around here. Wow, let me tell you something. The fourth ward and all the different wards look very different. So when you say, because somebody suggested that too, oh, we'll have somebody from every ward. That doesn't mean that everyone's going to be represented. I want fair representation, but I want it to be in a democratic process. And I want people to be able to, if they want to vote, uh, I mean, if they want to run, then they should be able to do that. With the mayoral part of it, that, uh, listen, the horse is out the barn now. We have to be very careful seeing how this election went. Now, how people say, you know what? This is how you become mayor in Montclair. So we have to get in front of it. And something's telling me that I'm not answering your question. Um, was there well, something? I, I I was just asking if you, you know, if you had concerns about, you know, the possibility that outside donors might come oh, in. So, so I'm telling you that mm -hmm. the way it is now, there are different groups right here in Montclair that offer to the mayor who should be on the board. And that's the way it happens. So um, either way, it's, it's the same problem. Thank you. Okay, Sergio? Okay, can you hear me? Because I had some technical issues. Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Okay, cool. So the board's already been hijacked. Just more obvious recently, right? But it's already happened. And I would, you know, we could play the, the, the other side. It, maybe it's already happened before too. I mean, you know, there's money flowing in. There's influential groups that are driving the agendas in the board members, right? So it, it's it, it's a non-starter. Yeah, is it more obvious when you've got you know a CRT or an anti-mask uh, going? Yes, but it's covert now, right? So it's, it, it's the same. We're, we're, we are in a bad situation, and we have one person driving policy. Just give us a fair shot. We talk about equity. I want equity in my vote. Um, but I appreciate that the League of Women Voters and other advocates aren't advocating for the status quo. But unfortunately, the two proposals, the counter proposals that they came up with are fantasy, it's make-believe, Santa Claus. It's non-binding, right? The law says type one, type two, that's it. So I want every, I implore you to realize it's already happened. It happened more obviously recently. Okay, so what? It's happened. We're dealing with it. Thank you. Thank you. And I see Peter has his hand up. Yes, just uh, the, the thing that continues to interest me is that we are being reminded that elections in Montclair are full of problems at the same time that we're being asked to put something that is so valuable to us in that same boat. 
and accept the same risks. And I'm just, I'm, that's not quite meeting for me. Um, I think that it's, it's clear that there needs to be some resolution to that. I'm not sure we'll get there tonight. Okay, thank you. Now we are going to, oh, I'm sorry. Did Sergio, you had your hand up. Yes, I just okay. wanna say no election's perfect, right? But more elections are better than less elections. Thank you. Nine people you can elect three per year, every year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to end the Q and A, and everybody is going to have an opportunity to take a, take three minutes for a closing statement. And since the elected side went first in the opening statement, the appointed side is gonna go first now. So Peter, would you like to lead off please for three minutes? Thank you. I am so honored to have been part of this very important forum to educate <laughs> voters on all sides of this issue. The League of Women Voters is always for voter participation and we urge everyone to vote. I have heard nothing here tonight that provides any credence that an elected board is going to improve anything in our town. And instead, an elected board runs the risk of losing our magnet schools, the risk of bond referendums being rejected by voters, and the risk of special interest politics and money staining the process. An appointed board also allows us to draw candidates from the talent-rich community we live in. Yes, we are only one of a few districts with an appointed board, but we are also the only district with a magnet elementary school system. We have acknowledged from all sides that there are still significant issues that need to be addressed. And while some are in the early stages, such as stability in the position of superintendent, the work of our new assistant superintendent for equity and achievement, and the passage of the bond issue to begin the much needed repairs and upgrades to our facilities. Of course, there is still much to be done and we can get together and find solutions that will improve the transparency and accountability but with an elected board, we do risk it all. We will only be as good then as the few who will run. It was suggested that we should push the power to the people. And this sounds nice, but true power only exists if you have choices. And no one can promise you that you'll have a choice at all or that the choices you have are those that you'll want. Have you heard a clearly defined and assured reward from assuming this risk? Is it worth risking what has been accomplished? Is diversity on our board worth risking when it is of such value to our students? Is it worth risking the enlightened diversification of our town that emanates directly from the magnet schools? Is it worth the risk of allowing the money of a few influencers to directly impact our school's policymaking body? Montclair is unique. We aren't the same as any other school district due to our elementary magnet schools. No data can tell us that one system is better than the other. It comes down to people. We want to choose from the best and expect the best results for our kids. We want accountability and transparency from our town and our board. We can accomplish the objectives discussed tonight with an appointed board. We want to continue working together for our kids through an appointed board. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Johanna, do you have three minutes? Yay. You're muted. Thank you so much. Uh, oops, I'm muted. No, no, you're fine now. Sorry. You were. Uh, listen, thank you guys so much for having me. There's nothing like coming home again. Um, and, and I'm here. Uh, in Montclair every Friday down at the park house at the do drop in playing a little bit with and uh, hanging out with the seniors who I know so well. Um, and that's very important to me um, to, you know, this is my community in Montclair. You, you know, you never leave home. And I know the Montclair people. Uh, my concern is what is best for the children. You know, at the end of the day, this is about what is best for them, the parents, the taxpayers. But here's the thing for me with the elected board is it 
there's there's a, a, a situation that you have with the dynamics of a slate. And people need to understand this, a slate for a BA, sometimes it can take two to three years to get rid of an entire slate who has gone rogue or who is dysfunctional or insidious. Uh, we've been working for over 10, 12 years to do that same thing in, in, in the uh, South Orange Maplewood School District. And, and again, I was blessed to be able to be one of those three independents in the last 10 years to be elected and of course, uh, Diane's sister had a lot to do with that. <laughs> so it's like Montclair support. And we have a, a, another member uh, on our board for Montclair. But the bottom line is that you can't um, get rid of a slate of people who have money. And we have to understand the dynamics of boards now. Very few people vote in board, board elections, very few. So if you have the money, to go out and get your posters, your signs, and all the things that you need, most oftentimes you're going to get your people in there, and then you get that power, uh, and that with that power comes other kinds of things that becomes very, very disturbing, and and that's what's happening now. I don't want to see that happen here. Um, uh, it's it's nice that uh, we have this type of uh, I love this because people can agree to disagree and and work things out and I've learned a lot on the other side but I'm still more determined than ever my whole life has been in education and and I have watched Montclair carefully and in terms of the children I'm talking to children and their education if it isn't broken don't fix it and um, you know I'm I'm just saying just be very very careful. Of, of what we're doing here and, and continue to look at it. And of course, the, 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 the dynamics and gentrification has set in uh, in Montclair, as Ms. Anglin said, and we, we understand that, but we're still here. Thank you. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, Sergio. Thank you. So thank you everyone, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, in this, it was fun, so, so thank you our host and panel members and Ms. Rusikoff. So, um, you know, I want everyone to be very clear. The proposal that you're going to be voting for means that you will have an opportunity to vote in November, right? November elections is what we want. We don't want these in May. We don't want these hidden shady elections where no one shows up to. So that that is going to increase our voter participation, and that's a deal, that's a difference maker. Um, so, voting is a right that I've always expressed every time that I can, and the more opportunities to vote, the better off I am because I get to express myself. But right now, I vote for one guy or gal, and whoever wins that for the next four years will have an opportunity to create their own slate that no one else can influence. So a vote no means you're voting for the revolving door of superintendents. You're voting for a AAA bond rating and not for the buildings. A vote for cost avoidance. A vote for mediocrity at best. The status quo means we're going to continue underserving the underserved. The data is there. Our underserved children and families need better. And I know that the voters will use their voice to make a difference, to encourage a board of ed that will make us better than what we are, because we are special, absolutely. But you know what's better? More special, and we can do that. So I want everyone to realize, what's the role of a board? It's to drive the policy, that committee work that's so important. You get two more people to do that, that committee work, which is so important. No one really talks about that, but it's massively important um, and, and something that we should be driving, we're talking about more. So, you know, let's not talk about, you know, not politicizing the system. Uh, it's already politicized, right? It, it, it always has been. Uh, so let's grab our right to vote and vote yes. Thank you so much. Ms. Anglin. Thank you, Sergio. Um, yes, I want you to vote for an elected board. It is time for a change. It's a democracy. 
When we talk about equity, um, now I will put on my NAACP hat and talk about the board has to um, you know, deal with policy. The Amistad law has been in effect for over 20 years and Montclair still has struggled to change that curriculum. It took community members to put the pressure on our town to get an equity super, assistant superintendent. It took the people to see what Montclair needed to bring it to the board. And it was met with resistance sometimes. And I'm not sure what that was driven by. Maybe it was driven by who appoints you or things like that, I'm not sure. And I'm not talking about everyone. There have been times where, um, you know, I thought it was a conflict of interest to have somebody who worked for the town and your, or be in a town committee, and then you're also <laughs> on the board of education. There's been so many different things that we just never questioned because we didn't feel like we could. It's just, you just take what's given to you. We have a choice now. If you know people that are interested in the board, let's bring them out, let's support them. Johanna Wright is on the Board of Education in a town, and she's not happy on this board, but she won because she went out there, she spoke and represented the people. My nephew, Scott, is an adult now, and if, you know, when he has the right to vote, that's what he's going to do because she is an educator. She did teach. She does have interest in these young people. I wish you were in Montclair and running for Montclair, we would vote for you. But in no disrespect, that's who has to be on this panel. The people on this panel have to be from Montclair and the people that are going to be making this vote and the people who have input. So I implore people to understand that don't be scared when people make it seem like Black folks don't have money, like there will be no funding behind someone who wants to run. I don't want to be on the board. However, no one's ever asked me. Um, so I've had people who were interested. I gave their name. They were never called. So I'm just telling you, this is a democracy. We're teaching our young people that they have a voice. And the only way you will have a voice to make change is to um, vote. And let me tell you something. Too many people are giving the appointed board credit for putting a young person on the board. That came from the community. And if people don't do what we want, then we don't vote for them again. We have people who sit on that board and turn into dinosaurs. We do need terms on that board and we need them to be enforced, not just reappointed and reappointed and reappointed and reappointed. Um, this was fun. My first debate, I love you guys. I have new friends out here and um, I'm gonna mute myself. Thank you so much, Diane. And thank you all four of you. I, that was so informative and so civil and so thoughtful. I, I got so much out of it. And um, I wanna thank again, Montclair 34. And, um, and I wanna thank the Montclair Local. Um, that's what it is to have a community newspaper. Um, we invest in that as a community and we get really good information from it and we can make good decisions based on good information. So thank you for that. I also wanna let you know that there are two more forums coming up. On Monday night, um, Councilman David Cummings is having a forum. Um, it is at Glenfield Middle School um, in the auditorium from seven to 8.30. And then there's one on Thursday night next week, the 28th, um, that's being sponsored by the Montclair High School Civics and Government Institute, the CGI. Um, from 7 to 8.30 in the Montclair High School Auditorium. So the students are taking part and we're lucky they are. Um, anyone who missed this, can you tell your friends, um, if you know someone who missed it, that you can see it on montclairlocal.news on the internet. You can see it on Facebook Live. Um, thank you again so much and thanks to everyone who watched. Um, this was a really great experience. Good night. <laughs>